Good morning, everyone. How are you? I'm starting off uh, with uh, uh, a lecture by uh, Martin Heidegger that was uh, given in uh, 1969. Uh, the title of the lecture is uh, On Time and Being. Uh, the style of the lecture is conversational. Uh, um, some of the phrases are opaque. Um, Heidegger does not quite uh, uh, arrive at a, uh, a precise elucidation uh, of uh, what the uh, appropriate of what air like air likeness uh, is. Uh, and uh, um, my ambition uh, here is uh, to uh, try to give uh, uh, a uh, make a modest attempt to elucidate uh, what uh, is involved in the appropriation of being the central phrase that I'm going to discuss, which appears numerous times in Heidegger's lecture, is uh, the German phrase, es gibt, uh, translated uh, into English, uh, it gives. I'm uh, trying to do something, as I said, that uh, Heidegger does not quite uh, uh, get around to doing, elucidating what is it and uh, what uh, uh, is involved in giving. So I'm, I've selected some fragments that I'm going to uh, uh, quote uh, right now. So please pay attention uh, to uh, the, uh, the phrase, uh, it gives and uh, giving. Uh, uh, the first fragment uh, I'm quoting is uh, the following from On Time and Being from 1969. Being is not a thing, thus nothing temporal, and yet, uh, it is determined by time as presence. Further, there is, it gives being as the unconcealing, as the gift of unconcealing, it is retained in the, in the giving. Here we are uh, uh, involving ourselves with the concepts uh, of uh, uh, concealing and unconcealing that uh, Heidegger discusses also at uh, great uh, length and uh, more precisely uh, in uh, the essay Das Wies, Der Freiheit, the essence of uh, truth, where uh, concealing uh, is uh, tantamount to uh, lying, uh, but concealing is part of uh, the process leading to unconcealing, leading to truth, very adeptly, adeptly in this uh, essay here, Martin Heiger points out the intimate relation between truth uh, and uh, lying. Uh, further, the next uh, uh, place in the uh, uh, in the uh, uh, in the lecture where Heidegger uh, mentions uh, 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 it and the uh, giving is uh, uh, his uh, uh, postulate. Uh, on page 15 of uh, the lecture, uh, that true time is four-dimensional. And uh, he adds, but the dimension which we call the fourth in our account is in the nature of the matter, the first, that is the giving that determines uh, all. Once again, uh, uh, please pay attention to uh, the phrase uh, uh, giving. On to uh, uh, the final part of the essay, where he uh, where he uh, pinpoints, uh, conceptualizes uh, air eignis. Air eignis, the event of appropriation. Air eignis would be translated as appropriation or event of appropriation. One should bear in mind, however, that event is not simply an occurrence but that which makes any occurrence possible. And uh, what makes this occurrence possible uh, uh, is uh, uh, the uh, it that gives the occurrence. That is the fourth dimension of time. And uh, uh, Heidegger adds uh, on the final page of, uh, of uh, the lecture, uh, the gift of presence is uh, the property of appropriating. Now, uh, uh, in attempting to elucidate uh, the, the phrase, uh, the, uh, which in German is, of course, es gibt, uh, let me say the following. Uh, uh, Heidegger uh, is not uh, using uh, the uh, everyday uh, 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 meaning. 
uh, of the phrase. Uh, in everyday language, everyday German, uh, uh, es gibt simply means there is. He's, uh, uh, he's exploring and exploiting uh, the literal meaning of the phrase es gibt. It gives. Now, what could this it be? And that's uh, what I'm going to uh, try to zero in on, or let, let me use uh, the, the phrase uh, zoom in on. Uh, I'm zooming in on this uh, it. And uh, I'll begin by asking the question, could it be uh, Freud's das es, uh, the it, or rather the Freudian id? Uh, yes, uh, it, that could be part of it. Uh, that could be uh, an aspect. Uh, 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 Freud's uh, id uh, das es uh, could be could be here uh, uh, related uh, to uh, this uh, it uh, that gives, uh, uh, but not in the Freudian sense, uh, because uh, uh, the id uh, according to Freud uh, must be sublimated, and uh, uh, then we are in the uh, uh, process of mediation, uh, uh, and uh, with Heidegger and uh, uh, also, of course, uh, Kierkegaard, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the entire speculative uh, process, the epistemological process, uh, uh, is designed to eliminate mediation and to approach the immediate. So uh, 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 let me do this. I'll translate Freud's phrase, das es, uh, uh, into uh, uh, an indeterminate uh, uh, psychic energy that is free to flow in all directions at once. And uh, uh, the flowing uh, of this uh, energy uh, uh, is relational. Uh, it is not subject to sublimation. Uh, it is a neutral psychic energy where may we find it in poetry? We may find it uh, uh, in Wallace Stevens' poem, phenomenal poem, uh, uh, The Snowman, or where the it uh, appears as the sound of the land. And uh, here in Stevens' poem, which is from 1921, the sound of land merges with or becomes the sound of words. In this poem, uh, uh, Stevens uh, uh, attains uh, uh, a, a truly uh, remarkable congruity uh, between uh, uh, the ontological and the aesthetic. Uh, nature, uh, mind, man, nature, language are fused so that the reader, the listener, uh, uh, the person who listens to the sound of the land finally may experience the nothing that is. This is uh, the final line of uh, Stevens' uh, uh, fantastic uh, poem. What is the nothing that is? The nothing that is, is uh, the it, because the it is beyond the conceptualization. That is, that is, in my opinion, uh, if I may be so, modest to suggest it, uh, uh, the meaning uh, of uh, uh, Heidegger's S, and uh, uh, it is this S, it is this it that gives, it is a gift that uh, uh, attains uh, uh, in, uh, among other places, and in our experience also, of course, in Stephen's poem, uh, what I refer to as the congruity of ontology and aesthetics, the non-conceptual. Uh, uh, I'm turning to, in order to elucidate this uh, further uh, and uh, engage in some more uh, uh, um, speculative exercises, let me uh, 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 evoke uh, uh, briefly uh, uh, Heraclitus and following Heraclitus, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Buddhist uh, book, the Mahamudra, uh, from which uh, uh, the Great Seal, from which I'll cite uh, uh, verse 10. The it is the fourth dimension of time, therefore it is also, in Heidegger, it is beyond time. It is an e example uh, of that which is uh, located uh, behind, uh, behind and above uh, stasis. It is what uh, uh, Heidegger refers to uh, in uh, uh, his major work, Sign and Sight, Ek Stasis. Uh, and uh, Ek Stasis is uh, 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 an instant. Uh, 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 it is Heidegger's Augenblick and Kierkegaard's Kierkegaard's Eierblick. 
flick, uh, the glance of the eye, uh, or uh, uh, the wink uh, of the eye, uh, where vision uh, uh, appears uh, before us in a fraction of a second. Uh, uh, in a fraction of a second. Uh, and here, Cletus uh, is, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, uh, the pre, uh, uh, the early Greek philosopher who, uh, who zeroes in uh, on uh, this uh, idea of immediacy. Uh, immediacy is the instantaneous and the unmediated. Uh, 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 we come across this uh, in here, Cletus' uh, thought time and time again. Uh, 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 as for example, when he says uh, about men uh, that they fail to notice what they do when they are awake and uh, uh, forget what they do when they are asleep. Uh, and he adds, one must follow what is comprehensive, but most men live as though they had a private comprehension of their own. Universal understanding, perception, sensation, and cognition are, un are, are universal and not separate or uh, different. There's an instantaneous universality in our existence, in our way of recognizing the nature of our being and of truth. Heraclitus is pointing uh, to the non-existence of uh, the other uh, uh, and of the different. Uh, uh, is really deconstructing uh, uh, epistemological and ontological dualism, uh, the way, uh, uh, surprisingly, uh, uh, similar to uh, the way Wallace Stevens does it in his poem, The Snowman. Uh, and uh, uh, thus, Heraclitus eliminates, by necessity, uh, in the form of the riddle and the paradox, the border between same and other, and between subject and object. And this a priori elimination uh, uh, occurs because being is timeless and universal, and because subject and object are one at one with one and other. It is precisely this at oneness of subject and object that produces uh, or is being's own innate heterogeneity. Now, uh, Turning to uh, the uh, Mahamudra, the great seal, uh, uh, we will find uh, uh, again an elimination of the barrier, uh, uh, the separation of subject and object. I quote verse 10 uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, the great uh, seal, uh, which uh, consists uh, of uh, uh, more than 20 verses. Uh, uh, by uh, the third Kama Ramchand Dorje, uh, a Tibetan Buddhist teacher or Lama, about uh, the year uh, 1300 AD. I quote verse 10. Mind's self-expression, which has never existed as such, is mistaken for an object. Due to ignorance, self-awareness is mi mistaken for an eye. Clinging to this duality, causes one to wander within the conditioned world. May ignorance, the root of illusion, be cut away. The fundamental view of the mind implied in this uh, verse is that the mind is a mirror. It has space, nature. Uh, uh, and the uh, pictures that appear on the surface of the mirror are illusory. Mind's continuous activity, which manifests outwardly as worlds and situations, is experienced as real and existent. So on the thoughts and feelings that appear inside unenlightened beings. That is uh, really what the, uh, the verse uh, means. One thinks this exists, this experience, this event is true. The main reason for this misinterpretation of the world is the slowness of our sense organs and the fact that our brain mainly works to exclude whatever information is not relevant to our smart. If, however, one actually examines the outer as well as the inner world, nothing is solid. 
everything vibrates, flows, and changes constantly, be it worlds, atoms, thoughts, or feelings. What is experienced as being real is actually a permanent stream of changes. The stream of changes, uh, uh, of course, is uh, highlighted by, by uh, uh, Kierkegaard and following uh, uh, later on by uh, Heidegger, by Kierkegaard, uh, uh, the highlighting of uh, 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 the stream of changes uh, 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 occurs uh, in uh, the work uh, repetition, Yen Takels, uh, from which I uh, quote uh, the following. It is in our days not explained how mediation comes about. If it is a result of the movement of the two elements and in what way it already from the start is contained in these, or if something new is added, and in that case, how? In this regard, uh, the Greek ideas about the concept kinesis, which corresponds to the modern category transition, should be considered seriously. The dialectic of repetition is easy because what is repeated has been, otherwise it couldn't be repeated. But the fact that it has been makes repetition into the new. When the Greeks said that all knowledge is recollection, then they said that all of existence, which is, has been. When you say that life is a repetition, you say the existence that has been now becomes. When you haven't got the category of recollection or repetition, all life dissolves into an empty noise devoid of content. Uh, again, uh, uh, highlighting uh, uh, time as a uh, uh, flow that uh, erupts uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, along the way in instance, uh, uh, Eublick, uh, and uh, uh, the Danish word Eublick uh, is interesting, uh, uh, as is the German uh, word used by uh, Heidegger, Augenblick. Uh, 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 Kiergart would not, would not be Kiergart if he didn't intend uh, a pun or imply a pun in uh, the word, because Blick uh, is both a glance, it is also uh, uh, the wink of the eye, and what happens uh, 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 when we wink the eye, we close close the eye, it's, it's the case of opening and shutting. And uh, for a uh, brief uh, instant, uh, a fraction of a second, uh, a vision uh, uh, of the truth uh, appears uh, uh, to us, but it's uh, only there for a fraction of a second, then it's gone because uh, it, uh, it is involved in this constant process uh, that uh, Heidegger refers to as concealing and unconcealing. Now, um, uh, the uh, 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 the uh, the uh, Kierkegaard's concept of the instant, which is uh, uh, my translation of uh, Euerblick and Heidegger's uh, Augenblick, uh, uh, is involved also uh, in uh, uh, his uh, concept, or rather non-concept, of being uh, uh, between. Uh, here uh, we find Kierkegaard using uh, again uh, a pun because the Danish phrase, the original Danish word used by Kierkegaard here is melem uh, feerne, and melem feerne means literally being between, but uh, uh, it is an ambiguous uh, word in Danish because melem feerne uh, also means uh, an account that has to be settled. Uh, and uh, uh, this account that has to be uh, uh, settled uh, emerges uh, uh, in the relation between self uh, and other. Uh, uh, and this relation uh, is uh, uh, three, it contains three dimensions. Uh, uh, it is a cognitive uh, relation, uh, an ontological relation, and uh, an ethical relation. Well, I could add uh, a, a fourth uh, a very, very important aspect of the relation, uh, which is uh, the, the psychological relation, feeling, uh, because uh, the, the key word here uh, is uh, love uh, for Kierkegaard, of course, Christian love for the Greeks, uh, agape. Uh, love is the relation. Uh, uh, between self and other, that relation which eliminates uh, self and uh, approximates uh, other, giving up self to uh, approximate uh, 
an other, a concrete other, not the other in the abstract sense, but an other person that you are, uh, are now in a relation to. And this, this uh, approximation uh, is uh, uh, turned on, uh, to use that uh, uh, phrase, by love. It is uh, uh, loving, it is uh, uh, unconditional love, the Greek uh, agape, that elim eliminates uh, uh, self uh, uh, and uh, uh, is uh, uh, non-conceptual, non-substantial. Uh, Another uh, example of uh, something uh, that, uh, uh, as uh, Wallace Stevens puts it in the last line of his poem, the nothing uh, that is, uh, uh, that is my existence that is beyond the substance. The German uh, uh, word here would be substanzlosigkeit, right? The substanceless substanzlosigkeit. Um, we uh, uh, have uh, examples uh, in uh, uh, world literature uh, of uh, this kind of being between or being in between. Uh, a a um, uh, noteworthy example uh, uh, would be uh, the novel Chain Bearer by James Finham or Cooper, uh, uh, where uh, the uh, uh, Native American uh, uh, named Sus Quesos uh, 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 comes to the conclusion, uh, uh, as he puts it, Sus Quesos, no tribe, no more. He has been working uh, uh, as a guide uh, uh, for uh, white uh, settlers uh, and has uh, left uh, uh, the tribe. Uh, he does not live with the white settlers uh, either. He lives on the outskirts of town, on the edge of a forest, in between uh, 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 the tribe and uh, uh, the, the white settlers' village. Uh, this this uh, Native American, uh, Suskesos, uh, uh, appears uh, at, a, uh, at a late point in Cooper's uh, uh, writings, where he has uh, uh, abandoned uh, the hope uh, of uh, the oneness of man and nature and the unspoiled nature, the unspoiled innocent encounter between man and nature uh, that characterized uh, the American frontier uh, for a brief uh, period of time uh, and uh, now has been destroyed. Uh, and now we are in the year with the novel The Chain Bearer by Cuba in the uh, mid 1840s, uh, where uh, settlement and colonization of uh, the West uh, is uh, in full uh, swing. Uh, another uh, aspect uh, of uh, Suskesos' uh, in-between identity uh, is uh, the liberation uh, of uh, the mind that it leads to. This is uh, not uh, clearly outspoken clearly spelled out in Cooper's novel, uh, but uh, I see it as uh, implied. The final liberation uh, is the liberation of mind from self and other. Uh, and this, uh, is, uh, this liberation uh, is mind's pure awareness beyond self and other. That is Heidegger's is gift. That is the it that gives. That is the giving the gift of it, mind, mind as pure awareness. And uh, uh, this is uh, 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 experienced by Suskesos, I believe, if you read uh, uh, between the lines in, in, uh, in uh, uh, the novel. Um, I return to, uh, for a brief uh, moment, to, to um, Marcel Proust uh, and Paul Austin. Uh, I wish to uh, comment briefly uh, on uh, uh, Marcel Proust's swan's uh, way. Uh, because um, here we note uh, that uh, Proust's technique is bound up with a recovery of lost realities. Again, we have repetition here, of course, uh, as a uh, central uh, motif uh, in Marcel Proust. Uh, the recovery of lost realities in remembrance, a recovery released by some externally insignificant and apparently accidental occurrence 
And uh, this uh, accidental occurrence uh, happens uh, in Swan's Way by Proust uh, um, in uh, 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 the tasting of a cake, uh, of a cake, uh, the Petit de Madeleine. Uh, um, and the, uh, the taste of this cake arouses intense uh, delight uh, in uh, the narrator, uh, Marcel. Uh, uh, and uh, from this recovered remembrance, the world of his childhood begins to emerge into light, becomes depictable as more genuine and more real than any experience, uh, uh, experienced uh, uh, present. Recovery here uh, then uh, is an aesthetic uh, uh, as well as an ontological uh, recovery because it's a recovery of of it is a recovery of uh, uh, past experience uh, through uh, the aesthetic medium. Again, we're talking about uh, the congruity uh, uh, as uh, that I found uh, uh, as uh, as uh, significant. Uh, in uh, Wallace Stevens' poem, the congruity between aesthetics and uh, uh, ontology, uh, and this 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 uh, uh, aesthetic, this literary artistic uh, uh, recovery uh, uh, of uh, 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 the dead past uh, occurs uh, uh, also uh, in Paul Auster's. Uh, work, Portrait of an Invisible Man, which is a uh, portrait of uh, his own uh, father, uh, whom he describes uh, in this uh, uh, autobiographical uh, work, Portrait of an Invisible Man, uh, as someone living in his house, uh, in his own house, as a, as a ghost, uh, someone who put on different masks and appeared uh, 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 in uh, throughout his life as five or six different people wearing masks and playing games. Each one of uh, uh, the five, six different people had relations with, with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, a woman. So five, six uh, uh, different women show up uh, at, uh, at uh, his father's funeral, Sam Orser's uh, uh, funeral. Here we have uh, an autobiographical piece of uh, fiction, well, it's more fiction than uh, uh, autobiography, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that turns uh, uh, the father's absence, the fact that he lived in his own house as a ghost is uh, described uh, is experienced as a young boy, Paul Auster, uh, as the absent uh, father. And the absence of the father caused uh, significant uh, emotional distress uh, in, uh, in uh, the family. Um, Paul Auster is, is trying to resolve uh, the absence uh, of the father and turn it, and, uh, turn it into uh, a presence. In Paul Auster's uh, 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 The Portrait of an Invisible Man, which is Paul Auster's father, Sam Auster, the father exemplifies and precipitates a gap that absorbs writing and involves the narrative act in a predicament. The predicament consists in the fact that father and son possess a common insight. Being is always related to something different from itself, another. The assumed identities of the businessman and of the artist constitute a mockery of being. The narrator notes that what disturbed him after his father's death was the fact that the latter had left no traces. It was as if the father had been absent even before death. And now this, this uh, absence uh, is uh, uh, pursued uh, also. Uh, in Samuel Beckett's uh, uh, novel uh, Malloy from 1955, uh, uh, in which uh, uh, the whole cognitive process is uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, involved in the play between absence and uh, presence. Uh, uh, the novel is very Socratic uh, because it questions, uh, it questions truth and knowledge, uh, as did Socrates. I quote from page 82, uh, of the standard edition uh, of, uh, of uh, Samuel Beckett's uh, 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 novels. I was not given to pre-sentiments, but to sentiments 
sweet and simple, to epi sentiments rather, if I may venture to say so. For I knew in advance, which made all pre-sentiment superfluous. I will even go further. What can I lose? I knew only in advance. For when the time came, I knew no longer. You may have noticed it. Or only when I made a superhuman effort. And when the time was past, I no longer knew either. I regained my ignorance. Now, in this uh, 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 subtle play between knowledge and uh, ignorance, Beckett eliminates uh, uh, also a barrier between subject uh, and object, the object of knowledge and the subject of knowledge suddenly fuse, they coalesce, and what is the result? The result is the elimination of knowledge and what is the key factor uh, in the process of eliminating knowledge? It is again time because he, as he says here, uh, for when the time came, I knew no longer. Thus, uh, uh, Beckett takes, uh, takes uh, the Proust uh, uh, a step uh, uh, further. In Proust, uh, the key to uh, remembrance of the past is La Petite Madeleine. Uh, 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 in Beckett, uh, there's, no, uh, there's, no, there's no key. Now, um, um, I must go on to uh, Kirsten Torp's novel, uh, uh, the uh, uh, precise, uh, precise title of the novel. Uh, in Danish is Intil Vanvid, Intil Døden, published uh, uh, just last year in uh, uh, 2020. Uh, uh, here, time is also a key factor. The novel, the uh, uh, plot of the novel is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, about a uh, Danish woman, Harriet, uh, uh, who uh, has a uh, friend, lady, a uh, woman friend, Gudrun, who's married to a Nazi officer. Uh, uh, the plot takes place uh, during uh, uh, the uh, fall of 1942. Harriet has lost uh, uh, her husband and uh, leaves her children behind in Denmark, decides to visit to visit uh, uh, her friend uh, in uh, Munich, uh, and uh, there she witnesses, experiences uh, the uh, implosion of Nazism, uh, uh, the uh, extreme uh, uh, decadence and deviation that is occurring on the home front uh, as uh, uh, Nazi authority is, uh, is uh, 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 assailed. Uh, both uh, uh, on uh, the Eastern Front, where uh, the uh, uh, the Battle of Stalingrad is uh, uh, being uh, is going on at that uh, that precise moment we are in uh, the months October, November, and December of uh, the year 1942. Uh, uh, the um, uh, uh, the home front, uh, Nazism uh, at home, is being assailed by a youth. Uh, uh, movement, uh, uh, an anti-Hitler youth movement called the Edelweiss Group uh, uh, that uh, is uh, publishing slogans, anti-Nazi uh, uh, slogans, and uh, uh, slowly gaining a foothold from uh, within. Uh, uh, the novel is bracketed, uh, again, by, by two temporal episodes. Uh, in the first episode, uh, uh, we experience uh, with Harriet uh, uh, what Heidegger refers to as uh, stasis. She's stuck in time. Uh, uh, the train that she's on uh, uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, Lübeck and further down to uh, Munich uh, suddenly, uh, suddenly uh, uh, halts, stops, and uh, uh, all the passengers uh, um, uh, uh, have to get out. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, this, this, this episode is prolonged. Uh, they are literally uh, stuck in this place. The surroundings are described uh, more or less like a, a wasteland. Uh, and uh, this being stuck in time, Heidegger's uh, stasis, uh, uh, then occurs in the beginning of the novel. And uh, the opposite 
uh, the, the temporal dimension, the ecstasis, uh, occurs at the very end of uh, the novel, uh, where uh, the, the Harriet has uh, become friendly uh, with um, a, uh, a, a very religious uh, young uh, uh, German woman by the name of uh, Ingrid, uh, who speaks to her about uh, God, and then uh, again, the key element here uh, is time. She says, I'm uh, uh, translating from the uh, Danish, uh, God does not exist in time. God is waiting, immobile and silent as a beggar for someone who will give him a piece of bread. Time is God's waiting for our love. Now, uh, of course, translate uh, the, 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 the God to uh, to uh, the other and other person or the other, uh, and uh, then you have then you have uh, Kier God, you have Heidegger, you have Wallace Stevens, uh, and uh, you have the whole uh, the temple aspect explained again. Uh, the uh, the central the central link in the relation between self and other is love. Uh, love uh, is uh, the immediate uh, mediator, or the immediate rather rather the immediate non mediator. It 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 moves, uh, uh, and uh, love is a relation, uh, uh, and uh, defined as conceived as relationality. Then uh, love also loses. Uh, uh, substance. Uh, uh, it is akin to, it is the primus motor, the primary impetus uh, uh, that uh, leads uh, into, uh, directly into mind's pure awareness. That is, uh, 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 that an awareness that eliminates uh, uh, subject and object. Uh, the, uh, the, novel, the novel culminates uh, in a, uh, a party that turns into an orgy uh, uh, in uh, uh, the house uh, uh, where uh, uh, Harriet is living as a guest. Uh, 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 it's the household of uh, the Nazi officer Klaus uh, Franke. Uh, a number of uh, uh, slave workers, uh, 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 so-called Ostarbeiter, uh, are working. Uh, uh, they, uh, they are all named uh, Ludmila. Uh, they're from, uh, they're from, uh, uh, there are two Ludmilas working there. Uh, one of them uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, raped uh, repeatedly during the, uh, during the, uh, uh, this, uh, this party or orgy uh, rather, uh, among uh, others uh, by, by Klaus Franke himself uh, and other dinner guests, other uh, Nazi uh, officers. Uh, and uh, the decadence uh, of uh, and the deviation uh, of uh, the Nazi uh, party becomes uh, evident. This experience, uh, the raping of Ludmilla, uh, which takes place in uh, down below in the kitchen in, uh, uh, in uh, the household, uh, 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 evokes Harriet's uh, uh, profound compassion, and she's ruled. She's a person ruled by compassion uh, uh, and uh, uh, someone who is uh, uh, different from others and who does not uh, uh, adhere to uh, any group like group class or race identity uh, uh, she's not blonde and blue-eyed uh, 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 I have to notice it. she's rather she's uh, uh, dark eyed and uh, has a and has a brown hair so uh, uh, by that uh, alone she stands uh, out and does not conform to the Nazi idea, Nordic uh, uh, idea. Time comes in uh, again because what is uh, Nazism? Nazism uh, is a uh, utopia that uh, is uh, the culmination of uh, the movement uh, towards the, the future that Heidegger refers to uh, in Sein und Zeit as the enigma of the future. But here the enigma, the riddle, of the future has uh, turned into uh, the final, the final stasis. This is idea. This is uh, Nazi ideology, and not only Nazi ideology. It is also other ideologies. The hardening uh, of uh, of 
time and experience the hardening, uh, stiffening of human thought uh, 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 at a specific, into a certain time and space that is going to last uh, uh, forever, an eternity uh, of uh, das Dritte Reich. Uh, right and uh, so so here again uh, uh, the uh, the existential uh, uh, the error uh, that the nazis made were to envisioning a future where everything has uh, has uh, hardened into dogma and where the, the social cultural uh, uh, the social cultural phenomena uh, are lumped uh, together uh, uh, under the auspices uh, uh, of uh, a political uh, ideology uh, uh, that uh, uh, that uh, eliminates uh, um, uh, human beings and eliminates uh, humanity uh, altogether. So in that sense, uh, we have uh, uh, here uh, also uh, the two uh, temporal uh, dimensions pitted against one uh, another. And uh, again, time is central to our understanding uh, of uh, Kirsten the uh, Torup's uh, uh, novel. Uh, Harriet, uh, the main character, uh, who's also uh, the first person narrator uh, of, uh, of uh, the novel, stands uh, out uh, as um, someone exemplifying, manifesting uh, uh, the, uh, the gift of being. She is also Heidegger's uh, it gives. She is, her love is the it that gives. Uh, the gift uh, of Harriet uh, uh, is that which saves herself. She returns uh, uh, to uh, uh, Denmark, but uh, the future there is very different from uh, uh, the Nazi uh, uh, perception uh, uh, or envisioning of the future. Uh, the future in Denmark with her children is uncertain uh, which uh, it has uh, to be. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh -huh.